take time to be holy. Speak off with thy love. Abide in him always. And feed on his word. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing. His blessing to see. Take time to be holy. The world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be. Thy friends in thy conduct, his likeness shall see. Take time to be holy. Let him be thy guide. And run not before him. Whatever be time, in joy or in sorrow, still follow thy Lord. And looking to Jesus, still trust in his word. Take time to be holy, be calm in thy soul. Each thought and each temper beneath his control. Thus, led by his spirit, the fountains of love, thou shalt. Soon be fitter for service aboard. We are always fortunate here to hear from heaven. So, you are going to listen to the latest information from heaven. <laughs> At the scene of the burial, that's in the place where the burial took place, testimonies came from other places about the same thing. In fact, a young brother there said the Lord told them to fast. They fasted for, is it three days? Two days, three days. The Lord said he wanted to give a message that would go to the churches. And so it was as he they fasted, I think the second day, he saw this man laid Reverend Dr. Amos Hassan and his late wife, Wati. Uh, heaven opened and he saw them standing in glory. And he was told that more information of them was coming in. They didn't know the Lord was going to give the rest of the information to Mommy Linda, who is coming now to make you to listen to the voice of God speaking from heaven. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody stand on your feet and say, love you, Jesus. Love you, Jesus. If you are happy to be alive, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just begin to thank him now. For the grace that you have given you today to see this day. Father, you are worthy. We worship you. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you. You are worthy, Lord. We bless you. Abba, Father, we exalt your name. Be that glorified. You are worthy, Lord Jesus. We worship you. You are great. Father, we worship you. We bless you, Lord. We give you all the praise. We thank you, Lord. We bless you, Jesus. We worship you. Abba, Father, we exalt you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. 
You are great, yes you are. Only one. Walk upon the sea, raise the dead. Great and mighty boy, mighty God. Everything about you is great you are great you are great Jesus you are great Lord you are great Father you are great Jesus, you are great. Everything, everything we think about you is great. You are great. Jesus, you are great. You are great. Lord. You are great, Lord. Everything we think about you is great. Only you can do what no man can do, Jehovah. Father, what no man can do. Only you can do what the man can do, King Jesus. Our Lord, what no man can do. Only you can change every situation at all, King Jesus. Oh Lord. What no man can do, Jehovah, only you can go, where no man can go, Jehovah. Only you can do, what no man can do, Jehovah. change every situation at all Jehovah <laughs> only you can do what no man can do Jehovah Father we worship you Begin to thank him. Begin to thank him. Father, only you can do. Only you. Only you. Jesus, only you. You are mighty. You are great. You are worthy. You are honor. <coughs> Blessed Redeemer, we worship you. You are mighty. You are great. Jesus, there is no one like you. You are highly lifted up. We worship you. We worship you. Only you, only you, only you. Only you can do Jesus. We bless you, Lord. For in Jesus' name we have worship. Father, only you can do what no man can do. We believe in you, Jesus. We honor your name. We glorify your name. We worship you, Lord. We give you all the honor, all the praise, O oh Lord. We thank you for another revelation to edify us, to open our eyes, to strengthen us, to know that indeed heaven exists. 
Father, we glorify you. Thank you for encouraging the holy ones because this ones we strengthen and we know that holiness is the way. And those that are out of holiness, Father, you will open their eyes, oh God, that they will key into your holiness and righteousness. As I share this revelation, I pray, let their eyes be open to you and let them know your will in Jesus' name. Every plan of the devil, oh God, we silence it in the name of Jesus. Every power that will come to deceive them, that will make them to un give them the spirit of unbelief, we silence those power by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. I soak everybody with the blood of Jesus. I cover this entire place with the blood of Jesus. Oh Lord, those that are hearing us outside, you will speak to them. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray after this service, everybody will go home with a testimony. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. For in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please be seated. I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm happy to be in your midst again in Nyanya. May the Lord bless you all in Jesus' name. I hope they have given you the pamphlet of the revelation, the booklet, or whatever thing. The pamphlet, the reflect of this revelation is out. If you have not gotten, let me see your answer. Praise the Lord. Amen. Maybe it's not enough, but I will read it. You will know what is inside. I will read and then explain. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Before I go on with the revelation, I want to share, read the scripture with you. Please turn with 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 to 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 to 14. As I read. But as it is written, eyes have not seen, nor hear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the Spirit of man which is in him, even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given unto us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually desired. Hallelujah. What I'm going to say here today are spiritual things. A carnal man, a man in the flesh, a woman in the flesh will not understand. He will be doubting. He will be saying, what are they saying? He or she will not believe it. He will be doubting in his heart. But those that are in the spirit... Those that are children of God, that are born again, that know that their God can do all things. When they hear this message, they are going to glorify God. They are going to thank God. They are going to be happy with God, celebrating with God. Because a soul, a saint has made it to heaven. We know how it's going to be in heaven when one soul enter heaven. How rejoicing in heaven will be. So children of God that are in the flesh, that do not know the way of God, they will be angry. But children of God that are inside the spirit of God, that are born again, they are going to be happy. But those that are ungodly, that are here, don't be surprised. Because when I speak, you will be thinking, how come, how can this happen? But I pray that God will build up your understanding in Jesus' name. Your eyes will be open to spiritual things in the name of Jesus. That's why many people read the Bible, they get confused. They don't even know, including pastors. They don't know things that belong to the Spirit. They'll be fighting, they'll be doubting. Hallelujah. So what I'm going to say here, it, still I will be chipping in the revelation of God through Sister Linda. Some of you will be angry. Some of you can even walk away, take your bag. I was like that. 
When we go for a holy crusade, if they invite us, as the pastor begins to talk about, you that have boyfriend, you are this, you are dressing naked. Me and my friend will just look at ourselves and say, see these people, that's why they are not growing. They are poor. We take our bag and go. We go to churches that have jets that talk about prosperity. We never knew that. But this art, it was our heaven. Those ones that are looking poor, they are heaven. It's above. So if you are here today, you are a first time coming to or more, maybe you have heard about Sister Linda, and now you will be looking at me and say, what did she want to say? Don't run away. Hallelujah. The Lord is speaking to you. Don't be angry. There's nothing in this world. As we are coming in, our mommy, mommy, doctor was testifying about what is happening in America, all these things. I was telling daddy, daddy was like, ah, how this thing is happening at this. I was showing him something in the internet. He was like, why? He was just wondering. Ah, he was afraid how the wind will be falling. Some of you have watched the, seed, the clip in Facebook. How you see the wind will be doing as if it's running. It's clearing houses. And then I was like, this is the power of God. I said to myself, I said, human being, especially when you go to this abroad, they don't believe in God because they see they have mansion, fine houses, everything is decent, they forget God. God just wants to show them that this thing you see that is important and great, only my wind is clearing up away. You are lucky you are here in Africa. Something is happening in America, great things. But it's the power, God is just teaching us lessons. And if you read Matthew chapter 24, verse 7, you will see this thing, earthquake. It's for you believer that you are sleeping, you should get ready because at any time, the Lord Jesus is coming. These are the signs that Jesus say. These are the beginning of sorrow. Earthquake, kingdom will fight against kingdom, everything that will kill you because of my sake, that will hate you, is happening. So it's just that some people, because they don't read Bible and then they don't think about Christ coming, they'll be seeing this thing as a drama. This is the sign that you as a child of God should sit up where You that are still playing with sin, you are still dying, loving sin, busy doing boyfriend, smoking cigarette, going to nightclub, stealing in the office, thinking of building mansion. Your own dream is how to steal money to build mansion in Africa or any part, to travel to America. It's for you to know that these things will catch you on the way. Jesus is coming. But we as a child of God, we are just getting ourselves more ready because at any time, it will carry us home. Hallelujah. I'm going to share with you this revelation that happened in August. People that we are coming, the first time of them to be in the camp for fellowshipping with Orimo, they have been following us. Let me just share a little testimony of what they told us when we were in the barrier in Taraba State in Lisam. Some of the women, because the pastor, the person that died is a pastor and a wife, two of them. The wife of the pastor have done a great thing with a congregation like this. The woman have done a great thing in the life of the women. Somebody was giving us testimony about her past life that before she came to know her, before she came to know her more and the doctrine of holiness. She was the one telling women to dress. You must dress, beautify yourself. She will be dis displaying, as they were saying that time, we did not know them, that she will be encouraging women to dress, to paint, to do all kinds of things like that. But there's a time somebody introduced, introduced them to holiness of our movement and the materials of daddy. And there, by the grace of God, there's one time, I think 2014 or 2015, we were there. In their church, daddy minister in their church. So they came to know or remote the messages, the testimony. She key into it. The person that was testifying, the woman, one of the women in the church, said that after she finished listening to the messages, believing in holiness, she came back to the church as a pastor wife. She knelt down and began to apologize to the women that he had misled them out of the way. That what she was teaching before was not true. That all this adornment she has believed and her conviction is sure. God, maybe God has convicted her because she believed that these things are true. She now began to teach the women again about modest dressing, about how to live a holy life. That this way they were living before is a prostitute way because that was what the women leader 
was talking in the day of her burial that mama here that is lying inside the coffin was she was the one that changed us because those days we were dressing like prostitutes she now taught us how to dress like a child of god everybody was surprised in the church she did a great job among the women somebody was telling us that in that church there was a great immorality great fornication among the women among the children she fought it she really did well correct everything because the persecution was too much for them the husband the the, the head pastors they were persecuting the husband but the wife was the backbone was telling the husband you must stand on this holiness by the grace of god this is how they continue in this holiness only listening to the Dedica messages they have not come to abuja but they have been listening to messages books reading books and build up their own self in their churches in their church and in their home because somebody that attended that is going to the same university with their daughter the daughter was telling them that we have plenty or remote books in our house. Our mommy will tell us to read their ability. So this family have been in, in or remote in the spirit. They have been following us, but they have not made themselves to come to Abuja to make themselves know. But in their own little corner, they have been reading the books, listening to messages, cleaning herself. Somebody was telling us again that before she came for this conference, she was doing a restitution. Before August conference, she was doing restitution, you know, she went to the church saying that she's going for a journey. If she did not return again, anything she had done to anybody, she did not know they should forgive her. That time she was preparing to come for the conference, but she was just cleaning herself. Maybe I will not return again, but everybody forgive me. It was doing packing her things. So when we hear this, and for the day for our burial, 95% of the women, more than those women, there are many, there are plenty in the church. You will see them, all of them, no adornment out of, in, on their body. The choir, this is how you see all the youth in the choir. They are looking very clean. You will wonder in this village, something is happening like this. A great number of people that you will be thinking that, what did these people know? They have understood holiness. They are following in that side of Nigeria. They are following. The woman did a great work. It's when we two went there, we now saw the great work the woman did. Because women, to confound to this, this truth is not easy. But how she able to break them, turn them around. Everybody in the villages where people are testifying. The night, we went to their house to speak with them, the, the relations. When daddy was asking, is there anybody that have, maybe God have shown something about these are our people because I was thinking that I'm the only one God has shown. And I was like, how will people see? They will be thinking otherwise or is it because they will, I was just thinking, no human being will think too much. So when we reach there, I don't even know that daddy have made announcements before we, they have made announcements. And then people start coming out. When the testimony, they were up to seven or eight different people was saying their own which they have not had my own because i got my own that day then they have gotten their own one got her own before the woman really even died that god said now go and tell my daughter to round up she was not able to see the woman by the time she had now they said the woman have gone to abuja and got an accident some after the burial the day they had that the woman died that night everybody started getting their own she was appearing to people so when they were saying their own and i'll say ha huh? God, I thank you. Me, I'm busy thinking here that what will people say? See, you have even shown others. The thing was so much that I was really comforted. I was like, let me just buttress my own. And this is what I want to say concerning my own here. Hallelujah. Uh, we, we, are, we went to the village in Takum, Taraba State. So we were in USA, local government. In Takun, we, we lodged in Takun, the city there. So we came there on the 8th of August. I think the barrier was on the 9th. The barrier was on the 8th. Okay. The barrier was on the 8th. Okay, we came there on the, the 7th. So when we reached, we, we, they carry us to our hotel where we were lodging. And then some of us, our brethren that were there, they brought food. We, all of us were discussing 
how things is going on because their churches, the church they, they were pastoring was persecuting holiness of our movement greatly before these people that they were persecuting them. That even the woman when she was coming was telling her that this holiness, I've key in, I'm ready for anything, whatever thing they want to do, let them do to us in that church, but I will not leave holiness. So the persecution was too much. All the, 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 the brand churches, they were persecuting or more, warning people not to go there. So when this thing happened, I was like saying that, ha, this is a way that they can frustrate people. They can be telling the evil against them because rumor was going up and down, <coughs> all kind of things. So our brethren, they were telling us the things that were happening. All of us were sitting down. So after some time, after sharing food, Pastor Paul Rick and I called the coordinator because many coordinators, they were there with some of our members that were there. So Daddy now said we should pray. The coordinators that came with some people that were there, we now enter the hotel parlor where he lodged, Pastor Paul Rick. We were praying. After we finished this prayer, I began to feel a presence of someone around me in the room. I was afraid. I don't used to be, be afraid like this. I was surprised. Ah. But just now, I was happy with people. We are talking. I will enter the room, come out, talking to other women that we are there. After the prayer, everybody have gone to their own room, and then Daddy was still in the parlor talking. For me to go and lie down, I was afraid. I was like, I, I was feeling like something is inside the room. I was afraid. It's like I'm feeling the presence of someone around me. This kept me tense up. I could not sleep for a long time. So when I came outside, I was talking to pastor. And I said, Daddy, come and lie down. And I said, I'll go and sleep. I will come because he will sit in the parlor reading Bible, maybe sometime counseling some of our people that are in abroad. The time, you know, some of them, when we are sleeping to them, is daytime. So his phone ring all throughout. So I was begging him that I don't want to tell him that I'm afraid because he would, like, rebuke me seriously. So I just used style. And I said, it is late. Come to the bed now. He now said, go in. I'm coming. So I persisted. So he now said, okay, okay, let's go. So he came to the bed. We were lying there. So I was bringing talk, bringing talk for him not to sleep. So he talked, talked, he was nodding his head. And I said, Kai, me, I used to sleep before him. As soon as I touched bed, if the only thing that would make me to be awake, maybe if we were praying or we are listening to me, say, but if you see, I just go on that bed. Me, I'm, I'm, I'm out. I'm sleeping now. That day it was my own turn. I will not sleep. I will just turn in. I said, ah. but I was feeling a presence or something in the room. I was afraid. What is the problem? What? I began to pray. And then later and I read the scripture. But when I checked the time, it was in the morning now. So, and I started reading the scripture, the book of Acts, just to keep myself busy. I read the scripture, one scripture like this. My eye was still dry. I was confused. I was afraid. The room was very tense. And then... As I was doing like this, I noticed it was late. So I'm now going to prayer. And I say, God, please, let me have a sleep. Please, I don't know what I'm sensing. But whatever thing is it, let me just have a sleep. I was afraid that time Daddy has slept off. I don't want to wake him. I was like, God, please. I was covering all over my body. I was like, God, please help me to sleep. Immediately, I make that short prayer. And I was, in my mind, I was like, God, let me sleep. God, let me sleep. I was afraid. Seriously. This thing have not been happening to me like that. Immediately, I now felt a cool breeze on me, and then I slept off like that. I don't know what happened again. What I saw, I saw myself in a gathering in this revelation. As soon as I closed my eyes, I slept off. I have this revelation. I saw myself in a gathering. I entered a compound. As I entered the compound, I saw women. In a partition, it's like they were preparing for program. This ones they will be doing this. This one they will be doing this. So I now enter there. So they, I greeted them. I went. I greeted all of them. I greeted them. And then later, I now enter the house. I saw a woman sitting. She was not doing anything. She was dressing very well. She was sitting there. So I now enter the house. After I finished greeting the women. Because I was really dressed. So I noticed these ones, they were cooking. So I just came. I don't know the people. But I just entered the compound, saw them. Women, they were preparing food. This one will be doing this. So now greet all of them. They now greeted me. And I entered one of the house. 
So I went into the parlor. I sat there. I was just sitting there. What, what to do? I don't know. I was just sitting there. So immediately, I felt someone was pushing the door to come in. So I was looking, who is the person that will be coming in? So as the person just pushed the door, I saw a tall, fair woman that was wearing white, like this A-line gown, very flay gown, very white, and she was carrying a little crown on her head. So when she came in, she now pushed the door back of her, and she stand there. She was looking at me. So I was looking at her. Truly, I don't know this person. So she now asks me, do you know me? And then I look at her and I say, no. She continue. So you do not know me. And you are here for my program. So I was like, since in the revelation, I don't even know which program the women that we are preparing, but I can notice that it's like cooking was going on. So I was like, which program? In my heart, I was like, which program I'm here for? I don't even understand. So she now said to me in the, in the revelation, let me speak to you. You will know me later. I want to talk to you so that you can pass this message to your husband, Pastor Paul Rica. So the, co the communication continues. She was standing. It's no matter of saying I will run out of the door or what. She was standing there blocking the door and was looking at me. And then she was carrying a scroll like a paper in, a, in her hand like this. She, she stood there and was talking to me. So I was sitting on the chair. I was looking at her. Since she said you want to give a message to daddy, I was like, who is this woman? I don't know. But since she said I will know her better as she continued. So she started this message now. Tell him not to bother himself about the accusation of people. If they are saying Pastor Paul Rica is responsible for our debt, that was the rumor that was going up and down. When we came there, they were telling us that ritualists, all kind of evil thoughts, they were saying because they want people to hate Orimo. The pastors, they, they were saying evil against Orimo. So she now was telling me, If they say that Pastor Paul Rica is responsible for my, our debt, is it not they rather by the maltreatment and oppression which they gave us when we were with them, because of the pains of oppression we were passing through or that under them, we were like dead corpse among them. Why are they behaving now as though they care for us? This, after these testimonies, later people start telling us they suffer in the hands of their leaders in the church. The, the, woman, the, the, the woman passed through a lot because she was the mouthpiece. The husband was not able to talk too much. So the, the churches, was, the, the, the pastors in the denomination were pressing her because they know that if she give up, the husband will just give up. So she and the husband, they were passing through. So she was telling us that the maltreatment of them, that they are pretending to them as if they care for them, they, they are loving, they are accusing people about them as if they care for them, where they know the one even persecuting them, that in the midst of them, they were working like dead cops among them. When we were among them, did they, did they care for us? They were our persecutors. Oh, they are lucky that I have no power to appear among them physically now. I will have exposed those ones who are pretending now as though they love and care for us to let people know of their evils and wickedness. Tell your husband, when I came to heaven and I saw the beauty of heaven, I asked the angel, what qualified me for this place? Angel, heaven is a place when they are singing here, you know, in, on earth, we only know beautiful flowers, this, that. When the choir, they were singing, I would just say it in my mind. Some people say it's only flowers. Like those days in Sierra Leone, we'll be thinking, when they say in heaven, it's only prayer, prayer. We grew up with that thought that, ah, heaven, they say it's only prayer, prayer. So they set and defile us. It, it makes our mind not to wish to go to heaven because heaven is only prayer. I am telling you, my brother, my sister, by the grace of God, by the opportunity, the grace I found in the sight of God, that God showed me, maybe it's backyard of heaven. 
I saw in 2013. But if that place, God can carry me there and just drop me there and say, this is your only reward, I'm happy. The little sigh I saw 2013 in my revelation, it is a place that nothing on earth, no place on earth is beautiful, closer, even closer to the beauty of heaven. I used to say in my, in my revelation, it's not exaggeration, it's what I saw. The gate of heaven alone is something that you can stand and be admired for years. You are not getting satisfied. Because it's like the gate is changing. Power is showing on the gates. Gates will be changing style. You'll be asking, is it remote they're using? Is gate is welcoming saints. When you go to heaven, you don't feel pain. No tears. All these beautiful flowers, there are more things that we have not known on earth. We are just trying to say beautiful flowers, the mansion. There are some mansions when you see it. If they say this is your reward, you yourself will ask. They should go and check well. Maybe they make a mistake. Because you will see a reward, you will ask, am I qualified? That is what she is saying. What I'm saying is because by what she has seen in heaven, she was asking the angel, what qualify me for this place? As a human being like me, what have I even done for the Lord? Is it true I'm supposed to be in this place? The angel asks, the angel answer, because of what you came to believe, practice, and thought in recent time. Because of holiness and righteousness. He said, your former Christian way of life was not worthy for your name to enter this book of life. Those days that she was a mama in the church, a zealous preaching, decorating women, telling women how to make it prosperity every day, no holiness. They were just thinking, as somebody was testified that she was a strong, that even some of our members, that Joy or Remo, those 2012 13, she too was persecuting them. Some of our old members that were in our church, before they came to introduce her to Remo, one of our mommy in, the Lord, mommy in the Lord was telling us that she was persecuting them in the church. Before she came to know, I went and be apologizing to the other. Ah, I did not know that's why I was persecuting you people. So that is what the angel is telling her now. That this holiness and righteousness, you came to believe this later part. Maybe she was not even up to two years in, in the movement. And practice, she not only believed, she practiced it and taught it. It teach the people in the church. Some of you, you have known this holiness, it's only to yourself. You don't preach it. You don't testify about it. You don't teach people. You don't even go to your family and preach to them, teach them. You don't even buy CDs, evangelize your area up to today. People just saw you don't wear a yearly and they don't even know what is wrong with you because you have not gone around and explained, telling the joy you have found in Christ. But she, when she know it, she embraced it. She believed in it. She practiced it and taught it and teach his people. And now the angel now told her that it's because of that that make you to come to heaven. So all those ones, you are wasting your time in denomination, dancing and singing. You are praising God. That's why the angel told her, your former Christian way of life, all those way what life you were doing, you are praising God, but you have anger. You are praising God, you are doing malice. You are praising God. You are a married woman. Your dressing will make other people to lust after you. You are praising God, but you don't submit to your husband. You are praising God in the church. You don't know how to talk. You have, you, you, you still in the office. And you, you busy say, I will go to heaven. If you are that kind of Christian or you are in that kind of denomination, that they don't teach you how to live a holy life, how to have the fear of God. You are just thinking, going to church, laying hands on you, anointing oil is the only way to heaven. No way. That Christianity, that is what the, the angel was telling her. But your former Christian way of life was not worthy for your name to enter into the book of life. I know, the woman continued to tell me, I knew I know I learned this holiness of life from the teaching of Pastor Porika through attaching myself to the books and messages of holiness of our movement worldwide. Tell Pastor Porika that I thank him for what he taught us. You people must continue what you are teaching. It is the truth. Tell Pastor he has helped me to come to heaven. She pointed at me. She did like this to me and said, your divine revelation testimony brought fear of God to my heart and helped me much. 
and helped me much. I was looking at this woman. How many people did I know that the revelation is changing them? But I never knew the thing is working. That woman is in the village. She listened to the testimony. She had the fear of God. She changed as you hear the testimony. And now she is grateful to Pastor Porika because she believed that she was not getting, she had not known this holiness from any place. Since she had been a, 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 a child of God or a Christian or a pastor wife, she knew. She knew where she got this holiness from. That's why she's thanking Pastor Porika because she believed and she knows she learned this holiness from Pastor Porika teaching and books and messages. She continued, when I came to heaven, I pleaded with the angel to bring my family here. I told the angel to bring my husband to heaven now because I was the one encouraging him to stand in holiness. I feared in my absence he would backslide from the Lord. I told the angel that the holiness I taught my children, which has brought me here to heaven, could also qualify them to come to heaven. I pleaded that my husband and children should be brought to heaven now. The angel told me he was not in a position to answer my prayer. He said, only your Savior can answer you and bring your loved ones here. You are busy bowing to Mary image. You are busy, your pastor will tell your sinners forgiving. You go and sit down. You are busy putting your hope on anointing oil. You are busy praying to saints that have died or whatever thing. I don't know. The angel have made it clear to the woman, even in heaven, I don't have any hand in this. It's only your savior. Anybody that is bowing to image, bowing, praying in another name, the God of my papa, the this, all these kind of things, God of choosing, God of this. Let me tell you, you are not going the right way. Call on the name of Jesus. He's your only Savior that can save you. So she now said that. Let me explain what she's saying here. When she came to heaven, she pleaded because of what she's seeing. She now went to the angel. Since the angel have told her that you are qualified to enter heaven, maybe it's the angel that is opening the book of life. She now pleaded to the angel, since my holiness that you say I'm not qualified for heaven, I believe in me that I was teaching my family the same thing. We make my children to come here. This place I've seen, I want them to come now. And these children are little children. They are going to school. The woman did not say, angel, can I go back and take care of my children? You that you don't want to leave this world. All your thinking is how to develop. It's how to prosper. It's how to be rich. You go to church January to December, it's only thinking about riches. The woman just entered heaven, and the last child is about two years. The woman did not say, send me back to go and take care of my children. No. Hmm. It's, it's when you go to hellfire, you'll be saying, send me back. The woman said that, let them come. Me, I don't want to go. Let them come. To tell you how heaven is. To tell you how important, beautiful, blessed it will be in heaven. You, you are wasting your time running after something. Let me tell you, children of God, you are following holiness, righteousness. You are doing it with all your heart. You know that you are a true child of God in your corner. You are worshiping God in holiness and in righteousness. You have done your restitution. You are following peace with your neighbors, people that have offended you. You are confessing your sin. You are submitting to your husband, to your parents. You are obeying them. You are following the teaching of holiness. You are applying it in your life. You are suffering, preaching the gospel. People are persecuting you. Hold on to it. There is a place waiting for you. A great place that is beautiful, more than Abuja, more than America, more than China, any place in this world. The woman did not say, send me back. He said, I want, them, I, I want my children to come. And she was pleading for her husband, for her husband to come. Because she knew that she was the strength of the husband of holiness. If she's not there, she did not believe the husband would stay in holiness. I went to the Lord. She said, after she said this, the angel now told her that only your Savior can answer you and bring you your loved ones here. And she now said, thank pastor 
for helping me to see Jesus' life. That I was taken to the, grace, the, the, the throne of mercy, love, that me of all persons talking to you, I have seen Jesus' life. That I was there in his throne and I pleaded to Jesus. I went to the Lord and pleaded that my husband and children should be brought to heaven now. She was thanking daddy because she knew that through the teaching of this pastor, I've helped her. She was just telling the good thing daddy have done for her. What a privilege for the teaching, for this truth that daddy make her to know, that they can make her to know. And she's now seeing Jesus, not only preaching about Jesus, now she saw Jesus life. They carry her for her request. Go and meet your Lord. He's the only one that can answer you. And now she said, I went to the Lord and pleaded that my husband and children should be brought to heaven. Now, she was pleaded to the Lord. The Lord said, people on earth are praying to me not to take your husband now. When we heard that the woman had died, I went to the, the, the hospital that morning. I lay hands on the woman. That was my first time touching dead person like that. I was crying, praying. Up to like 20, 25 minutes, I was crying, praying with one of my brothers. I said, Brother Andy, with other pastors that were there, Pastor Manasi, all of them, they were around there. Brother Andy entered into the vehicle, was pressing the woman, touching the woman. We were praying, God, bring her back. Jesus, I pray, I was crying. When the Lord spoke to me there, that be peaceful, she's resting. And I quickly left that place. One of my sister, sister Yomi was there, and I say, it is finished. The Lord should be peaceful. We now went into the hospital. We now saw the husband was oxygen. We now changed our prayer points. We now started praying, God, please let the husband come back. Please, please, we pray. Some of you that were in the, in the minister conference, it's like daddy told us to stand up and pray. Isn't it? We pray that God should revive the husband. God should bring him back, heal those ones that are in the hospital. We pray. After the conference, we, we are still praying. Some of the women that used to pray for a remote day, we are praying. God, bring this man back, bring this man back. So, the woman did not know that we are busy bombarding Jesus with prayer. For the man to know that Jesus now told her there. People on earth are praying to me. And even they say in their church. After they told her that the, the woman had died, but the man is in coma, the church began to pray that God bring our pastor back. Since you have taken mommy, please bring papa back. And Jesus now told her that, not to take your husband now. And she now said to me, but I told the Lord, I told him, Lord, the people on earth will not understand. In a time, I was, okay, the people on earth will not understand. He was telling the Lord that if I'm not, the, I was the one helping my husband. The people on earth will not understand. If, I, if my husband did not come now, I don't think he will continue this holiness. You will lose him. The Lord, I think the Lord did not answer her there to say okay or not. She now said that there's a time she was in the midst of the saints. And then they told her that your husband has come to heaven. She said, in a time, I was told that my husband had come into heaven with a joy. I was happy. Tell Pastor Polika, what a privilege I have now in heaven. I'm now in heaven through his holiness teaching, which I believe and practice while on earth. I never thought I could qualify to come to heaven. But now I am here in heaven and my husband too. Praise the Lord. The woman was very happy. She was smiling to me. I was looking at this woman, looking very young, very handsome, pretty, beautiful. And a little fine crown was just glittering on her head. And then she, tell, she said to me that I should tell that the Rick Pastor Polika, tell him not to be in doubt. Because we were praying, oh God testimony since we, they have not been coming we have not know how sure their christianity is lord did these people make it 
testimonies are coming that this we are the strong member of Orimo over there. And they were doing it in their church. They transformed their church to holiness. If you enter their church, you will know that truly they know holiness here. He said, tell him, that is Pastor Porika, not to be in doubt of where we are. We are in heaven, healthy, happy, and joyful. Praise the Lord. She now told me that, but my children have not yet come to heaven. I think when they told her that her husband have come, she now noticed that God have answered her prayer. My husband have come, she now went there, by the grace of God, rejoicing with the husband, because that is what will happen. When your family member is coming, you will be happy to see them. But she noticed her children are not there. Tell, please, tell Pastor Porika that I'm asking him for one thing on my children. I'm not asking him to sponsor them in education on art. No. What is in it? What is in the art, by the way? But I am requesting that he should ensure that wherever they are, they should know and practice righteousness and holiness in Christ. She's begging that the liquor, that he's not begging him to spend money on the children to carry them to education. What is it on earth? If God can answer her prayer now, she wants the children to leave this earth and go and join her in heaven. But since God has not answered her prayer for the children, and she knows these children are little, little children, she's begging that the Rika. Before she said this one, she said, I'm not asking him to educate them on earth. What is it in the earth? That God told her, Jesus told her that your children are in my hand. That Jesus will be the one to take care of his children. So he's, he's not in position to tell any man or not, you help my children, you take care of my children. Because Jesus told her that your children are in my hand. But she is making requests to Dadirika, Pastor Paul Rika, to ensure that anywhere the children are, Daddy should make sure that they practice this holiness, righteousness and holiness in Christ which will qualify them to come to heaven. You people should pray for the children that God will direct their hearts to himself. Tell my children to maintain the righteousness and holy living I taught them without deviation. If they love us and desire to come to heaven where we are and be with Jesus forever, tell them, tell them to know that the truth I taught them from the word of God is the most important thing in the world for them. Sending me to her children. That she go and tell the church. She has six girls. She said she go and tell the children that the, the holiness she has been teaching them, she taught them they should not deviate from it. They should continue in this holiness. To continue in this righteousness. That if they love them, their parents, and they want to see them and live with them, with, even with Jesus, that the children should not deviate from that thing she has been teaching them. Tell them, tell the children to be peaceful in life. God will take care of them. And then he sent me, he said, tell the church we pastored, Al-CCN, Sabon Gidal Lissam, that they should continue in the righteousness and holiness we taught them. The women must not give up in godliness in Christian dressing, which I taught them. Whatever the persecution, the hardiness and temptation, they should continue in the holiness of life, in their hearts and in their dressing. Tell them to be peaceful, for we have made it to heaven. Righteousness and holiness is the key that opens the gate of heaven. She is telling you people on earth, the expo, she did not go there, they did not ask her how many times you pray, how many times you were doing all this, but her righteousness in the house of God, supporting the work of God, obeying the scripture, applying it in her life, proving that truly she loved Jesus, she had the lifestyle of Christ, because she was righteous and holy, she now said the gate was open for me. So somebody that has gone there is telling you the only key to heaven is righteousness and holiness. And the Bible has said, with, no man shall see, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. 
And then she now say, tell those, please, tell those the Lord Jesus may lead to raise up any of our children that they must not adorn them with satanic property. She sent a message to those ones, family members, friends, or whosoever. The Lord will make them, touch them to take care of the children. Maybe someone will say, I want to take care of this one. I want to help taking care of this one. That she's telling those ones that are going to be parents now for the children, they should never adorn them with satanic property. All this palming, this jerichoring, painting, bleaching, ear attachment, wool, earring, ring, chain, bracelet, necklace, lipstick, cutters, or wearing trousers as a being a female. She, she's begging them, since all the children are six girls, they should not put trousers on them, they should not put attachment on them, they should not put lipstick on them, they should not bleach our children, they should not make their children to carry any property of Satan. I should warn these people that are going to take our children to raise them up. They should not put these things on our children if they love her. He say they must not introduce them to worldly life or any kind of sin. You can see how the woman have gone there. She know what the angel told her, what qualify her. And she's happy to send message. And begging those ones that would think that, eh, hey, this is my daughter, now let me palm my hair, let me make her not to feel lonely. Maybe uh, she will be missing her mother, her parents. Uh, so by that, you want to spoil her. Take them out, paint their face. She was telling them that that is not what they should do to them. They should follow the way she have left them. And all the children, they were dressing holy. No dusty on their body, nothing. She said that is how she wants her children to continue. And I should tell the children, they should not debate on what she has been telling them. So you parents, you are not telling your children. You are here. Be telling them what you have been teaching them is the right way. This woman is telling women that only those that are not that are holy they are not putting on adornment their heart is clean their hands are clean from every sin accusation in this world that are qualified for heaven why jesus is doing this sometimes i see that say god this is a mystery you'll be telling us this person has made it to heaven this person that was with you people this person has made it to hell why he said, because I want some of you that will be doubting, is truly this suffering I'm going through, is there heaven? Am I going to get a reward? Those that are righteous to tell him that another person among you that was like you have made it to heaven. You that are still shaking, you are playing with sin. Some of you, you are here, you still have anger, backbiting, disobedient spirit, love of money. Some of you are not still paying correct tithe. Some of you are still having lying tongue. Some of you up to now, you are afraid to do your restitution because you, if I do my restitution now, they will remove me from the job. My husband will send me away. My wife will know this. You are still afraid. They will remove me from that position. It's you the Lord is telling. That, that your righteousness that you think you are playing in sin with, no heaven for you. But he's telling those ones that are going through suffering for him, for this holiness. The pastors in the world today, they say, Yarin is not taking you to hell. It's a lie. Jesus is telling you that women that are entering heaven now, they are sending a message that this heaven, I entered there, and it was through this doctrine that our Father, the Lord, is teaching us this holiness and righteousness. Some of you have listened again to Sister Zenum, the same thing, that thanks Pastor Rika, I've made it to heaven. When she was in redeemed, doing a redeemed Christianity, she was not qualified. It's when she joined or more, knowing the holiness, not only to join, she believed, she teach herself, she wash herself, she went out and made people to know that I'm a child of God, clean up her secret sin, she now make it to heaven. This woman too, she's saying the same thing. It's for you because there will be no excuse that day if you die in secret sin or you die in unbelief, your own will be so terrible. After she said this, he said they must not introduce them to worldly life or any kind of sin. When she finished saying these things, she disappeared from my sight. She's like a breeze in my sight like this. Somebody that was talking to me, 
it just disappeared. And I woke up. I narrated it. I woke up with a shock. What is this? And I told daddy. And I narrated it to daddy. Explained to daddy that the, the barrier that we are going for this woman, see what she just told me in this, my, in this dream. I'm waking up now. This revelation. See what she said. Daddy now quickly write it down. And what, this is what she said. It's what I'm reading to you now. The reason why we are telling you this is to encourage you that holiness and righteousness is the only way to heaven. The way you are looking now, no yari, no attachment, no bleaching, you are dressing very well, no spirit of lust following you, we pray that your inside too is like that. No gossip, no anger, no lying, no backbiting, no envy, no backbiting, no, go, no malice, no evil thoughts, no lusting should be in you. Because if outside is clean and inside is dirty, it's in vain. Jesus told me that my daughter, tell all my children on earth that want to make heaven, there must be complete holiness, 100%. Outside and inside must be clean. In and out must be clean. He said, tell them on earth, there must be different with the child of the world and the child of God. Those days when you are going to church and a prostitute is going somewhere, you will know that these ones are prostitutes. This one is going to church. But today on Sunday, stand on the road. The only thing that will know that this person is going to church is the Bible and the person had. You will know that, eh? Is this girl going to church with this dressing? You will think that she's going for a party. Because the dressing of the party that we know those days for party, the naked dressing, this is what they are dressing up to the church. And the way today people are behaving, you see somebody who says it's a child of God. A believer, but you that are working with them in the office, you know they have bad attitude. And somebody will tell you that I'm a believer, but the way he he talk, the way he behave, the way he behave in the area, the neighborhood, no respect, anger, and you will be boasting that I'm a child of God. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. What we have, what I'm telling you, Jesus wants to encourage those ones that you are still playing with sin. You are still dragging in sin. Maybe there's a restitution you have not done yet. You are still hoping, God, bless me. God, do this. And you have not gone to settle yourself. Or you are here. You have cried to God to take away this anger, this malice, pride, gossip, evil thoughts. You see a woman, you'll be thinking negative in your heart. You see an handsome man, you'll be thinking evil thoughts in your heart immorality you are here you are still smoking drinking alcohol and you are selling it you say no business god understand thank god i'm even paying my time god said i should tell you that he's not a dirty god he's not taking any dirty money from nobody you are here you're prostituting your body you are sleeping with somebody husband you are a widow you are sleeping with your pastor sleep with your husband friend you see nobody to help more the children and that money they will give you, you will go and give tithe. Jesus, I should tell you, is, is not a dirty God. That money is dirty. Any money that is a sinful money is dirty. You are stealing in the office. You know how you are doing your business, 419 business, excess profits. You know you are putting excess profits. You, you, you know what you are doing. You are working for that person. You are stealing the money. You are not giving correct account. You know you are doing it. Are you busy Say I'm paying tight. My pastor loves me. You are, you are not doing the right things. The Lord wants you to confess today. You are here. You are zealous. Or you are zealous in that denomination. You are doing all kinds of things. You are a witch. You are a wizard. You are doing fraud business. You are a, you are a thief. You are stealing in the office, stealing in the house. Daddy was telling us something that somebody shared revelation. A woman died and they saw money in her hand. And the Lord now said, where do you get this money from? He came, she came to know that it's for my husband. He now said, me and my husband, we are one. The Lord now said, anything you take from somebody and the person did not know or give you authority to take it, even if your husband, you are a thief. And no thief will enter here. You are busy stealing your husband's money. You are busy stealing your wife's money. You are busy taking something without permission. In the office, you carry property to your house. In as I will carry it back, they know. If rapture takes place, that is in your house, your boss, they don't know. They give you money to go and buy something. Change remains, you eat it. You say, it's me that went and beat down the price. If you wear your property, you beat down the price. 
will you not keep it? You went and keep the change. Nobody know. Let me tell you, the Lord know. He will reveal it that day when you die. You are here, you are doing occultism. Secret society. You have prayed. Oh God, take me out. You have not confessed it yet. You have not renounced those things yet. You have not confessed your evil like you did when you were in secret society, in the cult. Idol worship. You have been busy bowing to Mary, images, going to the village. December is coming now. Some of you, you are two-way Christian. Little fear, little problem, you will go to Abalis. Little sickness, you will go there and be doing all kind of evil sacrifice. You go to the village, they compel you, say this is our tradition. It is not a sin, it's for protection. You have charm, you believe on charm. The Lord said, I should tell you, you are wasting your time in church. Any denomination you are going, if they are not telling you, you are just warming the bench. You are exercising. I'm telling people, some of these people that are in the wrong churches, they are not telling you about holiness, righteousness, heaven, hell, to put fear into you about sin. You are just there laughing, enjoying, going to church. Let me tell you, you are a footballer that you are waiting to come and play. Hellfire. You are just getting yourself ready because you are wasting your time. You are still going to church, but you're still going to Abalis, doing juju practice. You have that charm in your pocket. You are doing charm in the office for position. You must confess these things. You are still fighting secretly. You are your husband in the room. Holiness women, you are fighting your husband in the room. Nobody see you. You know what you are doing. You are still doing stubbornness in the house. You are still challenging your husband. You, the husband, you are still saying evil words to your wife. You don't love your wife. You are saying bad words and you come out and say you're a holy person. You must check yourself. You must check yourself. Love of money. Some of you love money so much that even to give offering and tithe, you will be looking for small money in the post to give God, to give God big money. It, because it's not in your heart. You are not used to. You so love money that you don't have heart to give big to God. You must pray against love of money. You must pray against it. greed. Some of you are greedy. You, food will be wasted in the house. You have enough clothes. People will come to a chapter you don't have. You cannot give from January to December. You don't give because your hand is too hard. You are greedy. You must check yourself. You must be a charitable giver. You must be a child of God. Naked dressing. Some of these, our sister, have started saying it. I'll be making you people one by one because now the blouse has started going down. Tight fitting dressing. You say, since they say long skirt, you are making your skirt very shapey. Tight you now. All your shape is out. Some of you, you say, mommy, this neck is too high. Let me tell you, it's those that did go with extra oil that will make heaven. Those ones that will go extra, say, hey, holiness, you people, your own is too much. You don't even pass deeper life. Yes, we are the ones that are going extra mile. You are putting thread on your head. Rubber thread. We have told you rubber thread is a sin. You are putting wool. You are still cutting your hair as a woman, babbing it as a man. You say, my hair is too hard. I cannot plait it for nothing. Let me tell you, it's not we. You are disobeying God. He said, a long year is a glory to a woman. You, you are going to a short year to God. He will say, depart, stop born children. You are hiding your heart to your destruction. He said, no, me coordinator, I will not part my hair. I will not do it. You are doing yourself. Everybody have had here, even me. But because of the word of God, I, will, I prefer bear this pain. How many hours to plate the hair than go and be in hellfire forever for disobedience? The wrath of God is coming. All those Jezebelic dressing. You that you are here, they invited you. Praise the Lord, you are hearing this. If you are still carrying attachments, earring, makeup, lipstick, brown powder, white powder, you are putting it on your face, wearing trousers as a woman. You men, you are putting out your trousers. You are, your brief is showing outside. You are babbing your hair. This worldly baby, so you are a child of God. You and those footballers, there is no different. Those, those luminatic footballers that they will bring in all kind of demonic style. You go and copy it. You say you are a child of God. You don't copy Jesus. You copy sinner. You are not a child of God. You are, don't deceive yourself. You waste all your time watching all those movies. You don't have time to read the Bible. You are not a child of God yet. All this makeup. I saw something in Facebook. Now they are making an artificial eyebrow. They will be doing it like snake. All kind of design. I say another one has come from eyelash now. Now it's artificial eyebrow. Women are scraping all this one and put artificial on there. You are just telling that I love Satan. So you go and be with him, hellfire. Because these are all his property. Believe it or not. You say it's no man. It's nothing. It's something. That body, you were not the one that created it. The owner of it say you must not do evil on it. 
You are busy tattooing your body, drawing your body, draw mark on your body, following fashion. If you are here, you must repent. Repent of those things. You are here, you are old. Or even young, God has given you gray hair to the glory of God. Because you want to deceive the world. You want people to know that you are young. You want to do more guy. That's why you say, eh, if I make old year, they'll say I'm an old woman. Old man. So you want to deceive the world. You want to play guy. You went and dye your hair. You are killing yourself slowly. Because hellfire, Jesus told me personally that, tell those ones that they have gotten gray hair, it's a glory to my father that I give it them. There are many youths crying in hellfire. They were praying for them to reach that age of gray hair. Maybe they should have changed. I've given them long years on earth for them to glorify. I've given them gray hair to show my wisdom, my knowledge. They are busy following the devil to deceive themselves that they can do themselves. That dying of year, they lost anyone that is dying this year. Is telling God that you are the one, you can create it. You want to do like this. You are a deceiver. You are going to hellfire. Stop dying your hair. You, that you are here, you are a divorcee. You have left your first husband. In, in Kaduna, you have gone to Abuja. You say, my husband used to beat. He was an old soldier. Now I don't want again. If he was beating, you are free to separate, but no remarried. If you are here with a wrong man, you have remarried. Your bishop has told you you have right. Divorce is, a, is, is part of the law. Jesus that created you, that have the law, told me that tell them no divorcee that have remarried will come to my kingdom. Divorcee is not of me. What I've joined together, let no man put us on that. The only thing that will separate there is death. So if you are here, you are a second wife, and you know the first wife is alive. You say, the first wife I've married, the, the Lord is talking to you. It's not about the first one I've married. The first husband I've married. You are here, you are a second wife. In somebody's house, you are a wrong woman in that house. You are a wrong man carrying somebody's wife. Know it today. Begin to pray the Lord to separate you because if you die in that house, you are, you are, you are an immorality person. You are a fornicator. You are an adulterer because you have married. So know it today. The Lord said those that are not paying correct tithe. You know, if you don't know how to pay tithe, ask your leader. But you are not paying God correct tithe, it is a sin. And if you are using dirty money, you are doing evil, cultism, evil business, 419 business, selling drugs, alcohol, prostituting your body, stealing in the office, duping people, and you know how you are getting money, it's wrong. Your conscience is telling you that it's wrong where you are getting money. The Lord said, I should tell you, that money you are busy giving as a tithe is not recording it for you, and it is a sin. You should not walk in a skin or in memory. So all these things I've said, some of you know more of it. You know what you are battling in your hearts. You know what you are passing through. Let's be on our feet. This is the time to ask for mercy. Because you don't know the time you will die. Many people this night will say good night. They will not wake up tomorrow morning in the hospital, doing plane crash, even sleeping at the bed. They will not wake up. It is not your posture, but at any time, your life is not in your hand. That's why the Lord said should look for him, to watch for him as a thief. Because he will come at any time as a thief in the night. At any time, he will come. So check yourself. If the Lord come this night, see what is happening in the, in the world. See what happened in Sierra Leone. People were sleeping. The death he just cut down, rained for five hours, covered the house and killed them. Some of them, they were sleeping. They died under death unprepared to go and meet their God, what will happen? Begin to tell the Lord, what is your sin? Is it anger that you don't know how to get rid of? Is it malice? Is it backbiting? Is it jealousy? Is it evil gisting? Evil talk? Some of you are putting mouth into evil talk. You have said evil things against somebody. Begin to check yourself. If the Lord come this night, are you worthy? Don't say it's a small sin. Don't be ashamed. If you are a witch, come and say Come and say it, let them deliver you, my sister, because hellfire, it is not a place for you to say, I'll go there for one month. Forever, you will be inside that fire. Children, check yourself. Are you disobeying your parents? Are you stubborn in the school? Are you fighting, stealing biro, stealing pen? Are you stubborn? Are you a witch? In the night, you are flying. Your parents don't know. Begin to check yourself. Little children, check yourself. What are you doing that is bad? Your parents are tired with you. You are very stubborn. It is not a good name. 
No stubborn child will go to heaven. Begin to pray. Ask yourself, what is the thing? What is it? In Jesus' name we pray. We want to ask you, between you and your God, if you know the Lord come this night, you know yourself there's one thing in, in you that you, you are afraid of. Anytime you, you feel sick, small, you'll be thinking of death. Hey, am I ready? You know what is in your womb. Because a child of God will always be peaceful of death. You will not be afraid. If you know the Lord come this night, or the Lord said tonight, my daughter, my, my, my son, or this year is your year to go to heaven or to go home. Which home? Is it heaven or hell? But you are not ready yet. There are some things in your life you need prayer. You need to battle with it. Raise up your hands. If you need the Lord in your life. Or you are here, you have not given your life to Jesus. You, you say you are born again, but you are still keeping boyfriend. You are still lying. You are not born again. No. So you must give your life and stop sinning. If you need Jesus in your life, raise up your hand. Raise up your hand. If you need Jesus in your life. If you have secret sin in your life, if you have battle with sin in your life, raise up your hand. Please, let's put shame to the devil. Come in front. Come in front. Quickly, let's pray for you. You must get yourself ready at any time. As a child of God. Are you still lost in over dwelling? Are you still lost in over attachment? You are desiring it in your heart? It's a sin. Come and ask the Lord for mercy. Are you still backbiting, gossiping? What are the things you used to sit down and be talking? You don't read Bible. You don't do evangelism. You are so weak. You should come and ask God to help you. As you are coming, confess your sin. Confess your sin. Is it abortion? How many abortion you have done? Or you, you have given a woman money to do abortion, covering the sin. The Lord is waiting for you. If you don't repent and confess it, the Lord is waiting for you. Confess it now. Thank God you are still alive. This woman was on her way coming for a program. She never knew that time was her time. Just an hour drive to the Kamga or one hour, 30 minute drive. She not die. If she was not ready, this is hellfire. But thank God she was ready at any time. Death met her in the bus. Accident. And you are busy going up and down in the car. You don't know we, what. How God has planned your life. Don't play with it, my brother. Begin to confess your sin. Jesus name we pray you have been laboring for long it will not be good for you to go to hell you have been claiming Christianity for long it will not be good for you to go to hell please make a promise now father is that I was not taking the thing serious but now I will take you seriously tell Jesus so I will take you seriously I give myself to you. I will follow you. I will obey. As I'm going down, I will go and obey. Jesus, come into my life. Change me. As I'm going down, I will go and obey. Tell Satan to leave you alone. You are for Jesus. Jesus name we pray lay hand upon your heart and say I give myself to Jesus now I promise to be a serious Christian I will not commit sin Jesus make me a true Christian I'm serious about it. Jesus, change my life. 
I have decided to change my life. I want to be your child. I want to go to heaven. Almighty Father, I commit these ones to you. They have made promise. They are taking it serious. Father, let it be so. Let their confession be so. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. There are some people that evil spirits are the one troubling them. Demon spirits, witchcraft. God, I pray for those ones. Deliver them in Jesus' name. Rebuild the spirits out of their lives in Jesus' name. Take over their lives. Change their lives. It is done. Go and live a clean life. A righteous life. Tomorrow, we are finalizing. It shall be great here. After your service in the evening, be here. And, let, and see what Jesus shall do for you. The Lord will bless you. Bring more people here. In Jesus' name we pray. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, holinessrevivalmovement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through Him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe my Lord and Savior, I believe in you, you are the living Savior, I believe in you, you are my
I believe in you. You are the living Savior. I believe in you. I love you, Lord. I love you. I believe. Jesus, I 